Okay, let's work on lesson two. And I want to pick up from the data set that we were working on. We made a stimuli plot for employee ages. We had groups in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And we want to go through and try to talk about measures of central tendency. You know, what is the central tendency? So these are all measures of central tendency. You're going to calculate three. Sometimes other courses or textbooks will ask, ask you to calculate a fourth one. Uh, but the most common ones are mean, median, and mode. And fortunately, mean is something that you already know how to do. Mean is just averaging. So you know how to average grades. You, know, you have to do that as a student. So you can average all these ages and try to figure out the averages. So the first thing I'll do is if I want to calculate mean, my symbol is going to be x bar. Now that's x with a little horizontal bar, and I just read it as x bar. The formula says you do a sum on top, and you're going to divide it by what? How many numbers you have. You know what that is. Now, what's our symbol for numbers that we have? How many? In. Very good. So we're going to put in on the bottom. Okay? So I'm going to do a sum on top, and I'm going to put in on the bottom. Now, this sum is going to be the sum of all my values. Now, in fancy math symbols, it would look something like this. The sum of x divided by n. Don't really get bogged down in the symbols so much. Just realize you're going to add up all your values and you're going to divide by how many you have. Okay? So if I use that same data set and I go to add up all my data items, you know how to read it out of a stem and leaf plot, especially if it's ages. You would say it's probably safe to consider this as 22, not 2.2. Okay? So you could say 22 plus 23 plus 25, and you should go through and be doing this, plus 27, plus 27, plus 29, go through the whole list, okay? When you go through the whole list and you add them up, <coughs> you have 20 numbers, so it'll take you a few minutes. I'll see you all the way. Yes, add everything up, all 20 numbers. Watch what you type. You don't want to make any mistakes. One mistake will go through the entire problem. And add up all 20 numbers. Now, to double-check what you just got or what you'll get in just a second, your total should be 834. Okay? And if you don't have it yet, you'll have it in just a minute. In, we had 20 employees. So, in was 20 in our case. And then you would just divide 834 by 20. And what's your average age? 41.7. Now, what I'd like you to keep in mind, especially, we've talked a lot of this semester about rounding. Don't round too much. Um, I want you to give all your statistic answers to at least one, two, or three decimal places. Don't round this to 42. Leave it as 41.7. Okay, do not round. Um, secondly, you know, um, when I report the mean, I want to tell someone the age is approximately or average age is approximately 41.7. I don't want to mislead someone and let them think it's older or younger. Okay, I want to be as accurate as I can, so I will definitely give uh, one or two or three decimal places depending on how my numbers work out. But the average age is 41.7. So I could say this is 41.7 years. If this was dollars, I'd put the dollar symbol. If this was months, I'd write M-O-N. You know, if it was weight, I would write LB, or I'd write KG, okay? You know, I'd put whatever this number represents. Yes, ma'am. 
So that was on the mean? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so average is another, or has another name called mean. Okay, now that's the one you're most familiar with. Uh, the other way you can interpret average or mean is if this was a seesaw, and here was the number 41.7, your seesaw would balance. Okay, you'd have all your data on the left, all your data on the right, and your seesaw would balance out perfectly. Okay, so that's an interpretation of what mean is. And that's the easiest one. Now, the next one I want to do is median. Now, median is your halfway point. It doesn't involve as much calculation as this one does. You just have to find a number in the middle. Okay? Now, that number in the middle, that can be a little bit confusing. What does it mean to have a number in the middle? And let me give you a separate example before we try this one. Let's say you have this data set. And you have the values 1, 7, 10, 11, and 14. Ten. 10's in the middle. That's easy to tell, right? And it's already, notice it's already in numerical order. That's a key for median. It's got to be in numerical order first. But 10 is in the middle, so the median, and there's really not a symbol, except some people use a capital M, but you can just write out the word median. You don't have to use a symbol for that one. The median is 10. Now, the median is 10. Finding the number in the middle when you have an odd n value is very easy. What would n be in this case? How many values do you have? Five, so n would be five. So if n <coughs> is odd, you're going to have one number right in the middle. But what if n was even? What if you had... Another number attached to the list. Same data set. 1, 7, 10, 11, 14, and 20. So now n is what? N is 6. Now, is there one number in the middle? Right, there are two numbers in the middle, and what you'll do with those two numbers is add them together. And you're, it's like you're averaging. So what would you divide it by? Two. You divide by two. You have two numbers there. That turns out to be 10.5. You can double check it on your calculator. This is your median. Now, how would I interpret that? For the first example, I would say at least half of the data is at 10 or below. Well, three of them are, so that's at least half. And at least half are at 10 and above, and three of them are, so that's at least half. At least half of the data is at 10.5 or below, so there's three of them, that's half. And then at least half of them are 10.5 and above, well, there's three of them, so that's half. So it's marking off the halfway point. And something else that will be coming later is I'm going to call this the 50th percentile. And if any of you have had any children, then you hear the word percentile every time you go to the doctor's office when they're growing up. How tall are they? Uh, what's the size of their head? What's their weight? And they will give it to you in percentiles. So we'll actually talk about more about what a percentile is, but this would be the 50th percentile. Okay. Now, what is good about the median as opposed to the mean? Because before I get ready to do this median example, would my answer change if this was a 44? Would the median still be 10? Huh. Isn't that neat? Would the mean have stayed the same? No. If you add them all up and divide by 5, that average would have gone up. Think about when you have test grades. You want to have a high number to pull it up, right? If you do median... A high number, as long as it doesn't change the middle, a high number does not change the median answer. It's still 10. Or what about this one? What if this had been a negative 5? Because sometimes you can have negative numbers. Depends on what your data set is. This could be how much money you owe somebody. You owe them $5, so you write as a negative. 
would the median still change or would it stay alone? Yeah, stand alone. It, it wouldn't change because that doesn't affect the middle. So median only does middle. Now, where would you see this in an article, in a paper, or some kind of discussion? House prices. Okay, you would say the median house price is X amount of dollars. Well, that's telling you about the halfway mark for the low prices below this and the halfway mark for the ones above it. Um, so, in other words, would a million dollar house affect a median? Probably not. You know, if the median was $200,000, would a million dollar house affect it? No, that's above the middle. It wouldn't change it at all. What about a salary? Let's say the median salary at a company is $30,000. Would somebody who came in and made $5,000 because they only worked a little bit of time, would that affect the $30,000? Probably not. But would those numbers pull up or pull down an average? Yes. Definitely. So the mean is very <clears throat> sensitive. It is very sensitive to high numbers or low numbers, but the median doesn't matter. Put it in order, find the middle, you're done. So when we get the middle, keep in mind, it doesn't get affected by high or low numbers. And that's sometimes why people like to use it. They don't want to report too high of a house price or report too low of a salary. Okay, they want something in the middle to give you an idea of what to expect. So now let's try to find the middle for the ages. Because, so now let's try to find the middle for the ages. Because somebody may be getting ready to apply to a job, and they say, well, here's the list of ages we have. What's the median? Okay, what would be the number in the middle? Now, you have how many items? 20. So in this case, N was 20. Now, will that have one middle or two middles? Two. Now remember, the N was five, we had one middle. N was six, we had two middles that we averaged. So if it was even, you're going to have two middles. So you got to figure out what two numbers are in the middle. Now, you know, well, how do I figure that out? Okay. You can count backwards, like this is this is the 20th item and that's the first. Okay, you can go in and say, all right, there's 19 and 2. 18 and 3. 17 and 4. And that gets a little tedious, right? But you can keep doing that just to get an idea. Keep going, inching in towards the middle. There's another one. Just take off one from the top and one from the bottom. One from the top, one from the bottom. You don't have to count them. One from the top. Now, which one would be the bottom? Yeah, the 31. So you got to be careful. Uh, top, bottom. Top, bottom. So guess what two numbers in the middle? 38 and 39. So I would say 38 plus 39 divided by 2. That would be 38.5. And I would say at least half of the people employed in this company are 38.5 years or older, and at least half are 38.5 years or younger. Now, you might say, I don't like this coming outside in, marking one off, that I can get confused very quickly and mark off the wrong one. I understand. So we have a formula that will help you. <coughs> this formula, keep in mind though, only tells you the position of the median. And the position of the median, when you want to calculate it, is the following formula. <coughs> N plus 1 divided by 2. Now that doesn't tell you the median. Because you already know the answer is 38.5. What's in in our case? 20. So you're going to have 20 plus 1 <coughs> divided by 2. So on your calculator, if you can't do it in your head, 21 divided by 2 would be what? 10.5. Now, is that the same answer as what we just got, 38.5? No. All this does is tell you where to find it. Now let me show you how to figure that out. 
Okay? This is position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here's 10. 10.5 is right in the middle of 10 and 11. Which means when I see 10.5, that tells me it's in between 10 and 11 which we've seen now in the median, if you're in between it, you add them together and divide by two. And that tells you the number in the middle. So this formula is helpful if you have a long list of numbers and you don't want to keep marking them off or you can't look at it and just see the middle pop out at you. And that's okay. Can we me. use a position in a median or can we just do it? We you can do it either way you want to. Whatever you're most comfortable with. And honestly, I will show you another way to do median when we do percentiles. So you'll have a third choice, and percentiles are on your formula sheet. So you'll be able to follow that formula no matter what percentile is, 50%, 20%, doesn't matter. Okay? So you'll have a choice, but 38.5 is your actual answer. This just tells you where to go. Okay? So let me give you another example, and let me tell you one more thing. We've done median. What about mode? And I'm going to rewrite this because it's not clear. Go back to this data set and it's organized as a stem and leaf. Mode doesn't have any calculation at all. All it really needs is for you to be able to tell which item or items occurred the most. Now you can have a tie. Ties are good, okay, they're good, no problem. But if one occurs more than another one and it breaks the tie, then you don't list that one. But what repeated first of all? 27. And 45. Nothing else repeated. So the rest of them cannot be the mode. Now, do they repeat an equal number of times? Yes. Yes. Then this would be what we'd call bimodal. You know, bicycle, whatever. You have two modes, 27 and 45. And you would just list them. Sometimes you don't have any repeats. And so you just say no mode. There isn't one. Um, sometimes you might have an extra 5 in here, and so then 45 would have been the only thing you would write as the mode. So if anything beats another one, just list the highest one. Okay, but mode is just whatever occurs the most. Now, mode is not quite as useful. Um, typically, you either want to average things or you want to find the 50% mark. Mode may come in handy, for example, if you were ordering shoes. Maybe you're the manager at a shoe store and you want to order sizes. Would you order more of the mode or less of the mode? More. You'd probably order more of the mode because that seems to be the shoe size that is most frequent. Okay, You wouldn't average the shoe sizes and try to order an 8.13 shoe size. That wouldn't make any sense. But 8s might be more frequent than 6s. So you'd make sure you order more 8s. Okay, so mode is real good if you want specific numbers and you don't want to try to fall in between them. <clears throat> Median's good because you don't want to have high numbers or low numbers to throw off the center mark. An average, well, everybody knows how to average and that's a good way to try to find the center. Just realize that high, low, high numbers and low numbers can really mess you up. Okay, so you gotta be careful.
your students. So every semester you take classes, you list out the classes you're taking, the semester hours that they're worth, and the grade that you ended up with in each course. When you put all this together, what can you calculate? You can calculate your GPA. Now, GPA, do you think that's a mean, a median, or a mode? Mean. It's going to be a mean. Okay, it's a special kind of mean. It's going to be weighted. So you can just average anything all day long, but you can also weight things. Now, which is going to count stronger in your GPA? An uh, English class where you made a B or a German class where you made an A? English. Why English? <clears throat> because it holds more credits. It has five hours. So five hours of English counts more than the two hours of German. Okay, even though you made an A and that's really good and you want to do something like that, the one that counts the most is where you're going to have the most credit. Okay, so when I sit down to calculate GPA, I want to do a weighted mean. Now, when I do a weighted mean, it's still an average, X bar, and it's still a sum divided by N. Except now my N is going to look a little different. Okay, that's the overall idea of what I'm doing. What I want to do for the sum is to multiply the credit hours times the grade. Now, can I leave it as A, B, C? Or what do you replace with an A? A group from between 90 to 100? Yeah, it's a group from 90 to 100, but what number do you assign A if you're doing GPA? Four. Yeah, you call it 4. Okay, what do you call a B? Three. A 3. A C? Mm -hmm. And then we got a three and another four. In other words, I have to have two numbers to multiply. So I'm going to take the credit hours from a course times the grade that I earned. So I'm going to say three times four. And I'll say plus. And so it's going to end up being a sum. Here I would say three times what? Three times three. Plus, and I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to start over down here. 3 times 4 plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times 2 plus 5 times 3, 2 times 4. And that's going to give you my sum. Now, N usually is the number of data items, but I would never divide by 5 because these are, number 1, not all the same hours, and number 2, N in this case represents hours that you signed up for. So N is going to come from this column. You signed up for 3, 6, 9, 14, 16 hours. So N is actually 16. Okay? So I'm going to divide by 16. And this is going to help me calculate my GPA, which is a special kind of weighted mean. Now, when you multiply all these numbers together and add them up, 12 plus 9 plus 6 plus 15 plus 8, you end up with 50 divided by 16. Your GPA, or your X bar, would end up being 3.125. Do not round it. Don't say 3.13. Don't say 3.1. Don't even say 3. GPA is typically listed to three decimal places because whoever's looking at the GPA wants to be very precise because they want to see it out to the thousands place. So 3.125. But that GPA indicates if I had a teeter-totter and I could put my grades and the hours up there and make it be a seesaw, it would balance at 3.125. And that would be my GPA for that semester. Now, if you're doing it over the course of all the times you took classes, you would have all of these listed out for every class and divided by how many hours you've signed up for. Okay? So you would do something like mean for GPA. Now just let me give you a basic data set. 275, 56, 34, 102, and 102. Could you get the mean of this data set? 
it's pretty straightforward. Add them up and divide by, uh, divide by 5. Okay. So my mean or my x bar, my sum, I've got it listed here, is 569. Divide by 5. And again, I don't want to round too much. But 113.8. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one decimal place there. What about the median? Oh, I heard two answers. 34 and 102. Yes. You have to put the data items in order before you can do median. So, and I did this example on purpose, and I can promise you you will be tested on this again like this. So go ahead and put a big star by it. Put it in order first. So if I'm asked to do median, 34 is the smallest, then 56, 102, 102, 275. Now, I don't even need to use the position formula, do I? It's easy to tell the median here, 102. Now, does it matter that 102 happened more than once? No. It's literally the number in the middle. And that's all you want to find. And what about the mode? That's the number that occurred the most, so there was really no calculation necessary. Okay, what about a mean and a median and a mode for this data set. for each age. What's the fancy name for this table? It's a distribution. What kind of distribution? It's either frequency or grouped frequency. Is it grouped? Yeah, it's just plain old frequency. There's no groups like 20 to 29, 20 to 25, anything like that. No groups. So this is a plain old frequency distribution. Now, what this means is, if I had the data set, I would write 25 how many times? Ten. I would write it 10 times, but honestly, I'm already tired of doing that. And someone's asked me to do the mean, the median, and the mode. Well, I can still figure this out, okay? If I don't want to write out the entire data set, what I can do is try to figure out how to get the average, for example. Let's do the first one, the mean. You have to do a sum divided by how many items you have. Multiply each by 25 by 10, 31 by 2, 67 by 1, and then divide by Okay. So in other words, like you did GPA, right? That was a quick way to add things up for the, and I'll put it right down here, for the ages and the frequency to get the 25-year-olds. I have 10 of them. Why don't I do 25 times 10? Add that to 31 times 2 plus 61, or excuse me, 62 times 1 plus 91 times 3. Whatever that is. And then I have to divide it by how many people? 16 people. And that comes from your frequency column. Okay, so let's see. Your sum should have been, what, 647? Mm -hmm. All right, divide it by 16. 
And this one you would have to round, and most of the time, at least one decimal place is good. Technically, you get this long number, but if you reported 40.4 years, that would be acceptable. Okay, it'd give me at least one decimal place. But that would be your average age. Now, don't be upset that your average is a number not in your list. That happens all the time. Census was just taken for 2010. They might have said each family had 2.3 kids. Do you think you can go into a household and find 2.3 kids? No, you're going to get numbers that are not actually in your data set. That's okay. It's telling you about an average of 40.4. Okay? Now, what about the median? This time I don't have my data set listed out for me. So I usually go to the position formula if I want to do median. Let me do the position. And the position is n plus 1 divided by 2. What's n? 16. All right, 16 plus 1 divided by 2. So that's 17 divided by 2, 8.5. Now remember what a point five meant. It's going to be in between two numbers. All right, now I've got to find position eight and position nine. But let's think smart about this. This table organized all my positions. Twenty-five is in position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The first ten positions have the same number, twenty-five. Mm -hmm. So what's position eight? 25. What's position 9? 25. 25. So if you average 25 and 25, it's just 25 and that's your median. And that will take some getting used to. You'll have to kind of practice that to realize position doesn't tell you what it is. It tells you where it is. And keep in mind, we're going to do something with percentiles, and this is going to change. So I won't really use this formula a whole lot anymore, because I'm going to try to minimize the number of formulas we use. But it gets you thinking about finding a position and where it would be. Now, mode is the simplest of all of them. Twenty-five. It occurred the most, didn't it? It occurred 10 times. So that would be the mode. Now, if you wanted to report measures of central tendency, which of the mean, median, and mode most accurately reflect the table? Like the 25 better? Because you have 10 25-year-olds. Do you have anybody with this age 40.4 or even in the 40 range? Mm -hmm. If you knew that the average age was about 40, would you be surprised if you walked in and found 10 25-year-olds? And then a 31, a 62, and a 91. So you might say, well, why should I do mean? Well, in this case, I probably wouldn't report the mean. I would probably report the median and or the, the mode. You may be asked to calculate all of them, but it doesn't mean all of them are applicable. Okay, so you might want to use some, but not the other. Any questions on calculating mean, median, and mode? Okay. You can look through the rest of the notes on your Moodle notes. There's a couple more examples that I did not cover, but they basically just do more examples of what we're seeing, mean, median, and mode. Okay, so just let me know if you have any questions.